name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. To Him be the glory now and forever unto the end of the ages, Amen. We talked about uh, vestments in the church. We talked about vestments of a deacon. We talked about the vestments of the priests, vestments of bishops, patriarchs. We touched upon many things, like the tunic, the tunia, the stole, the badrashin, the sadra, uh, which is like this one, the cape, the bornos. We talked about the talasana, the crown, the headgear, kolonsoa. We talked about the staff for the bishop or the uh, patriarch. Um, I want to continue the journey, but we want to talk about, about vestments of the church. Vestments of the church. And church has vestments. Uh, a vestment is like any, anything that's cloth, it's vestment. And uh, the first or foremost in the vestments of the church is what we call the curtain. Now it's open right now, you can see the side curtains. Uh, the curtain is very special. And it has, it was there in the Old Testament, and, but now in the New Testament, it's there with a different meaning. So I want to talk about where, the, where, the, where this veil came from and what it, what it meant back then and what the veil means now. We call it the curtain or the veil. So if I use either word, you'll find the scriptures called the veil. We're not talking about this is the veil, of, or the, the veil of the face. No, this is the veil of the, whole, the most holy place. Uh, God told Moses, the prophet, in Exodus um, chapter 26, uh, verse 30, beginning at verse 31, um, you shall make a veil woven of blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and fine woven linen. It shall be woven with an artistic design of cherubim. And you shall hang it upon the four pillars of acacia wood overlaid with gold. Their hooks shall be with gold upon four sockets of silver. You shall hang the veil from the clasp. Then you shall bring the ark of the testimony in there behind the veil. The veil, this the veil, shall be a divider. For you between the holy place and the most holy place. You should put the mercy seat upon the ark of testimony in the most holy. You should set the table outside the veil and the lampstand and everything outside the veil. So, so the veil is a divider. This was a do not cross line. You, you, you go somewhere, you shall not enter here. Only authorized persons. It was. It was like. It's a. It was something to be to stop at, not to go through. It was something to stop at, not to go through. Why? Because this was the most holy place. This is the the place which the uh, high priest used to go once with the blood of a sacrifice with a censer appear before the uh, Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat. Moses frequently used to go there, talk with God. The cloud would rest upon there. So this was, and sometimes it's called the presence behind the veil. In St. Paul in Hebrew, it talks about the presence of behind the veil. What's the presence of who? The presence of who behind the veil? The presence of God. So this was a, a dividing line. Remember in the Old Testament, there was, no, there was very limited access to God. We are so lucky. We are so fortunate. We are so blessed to have that kind of access to the most holy place. Back then, no, you could not. It was a divider. That's why we, St. Paul talks about the middle wall of separation between heaven and earth. And how through the cross... I'll talk about it later, how this middle veil, the middle wall came down. We see this in the liturgy of St. Gregory, how the middle wall between us and God came down. And that veil was a constant reminder. Even when the, the only, who could go in the holy place? So this is the holy of holies, this is the holy place. Who could go in the holy place? I need someone to tell me. Who can go in the holy place? Hmm. The priest. Who else other than the priest? And the, the, the holy place. Who goes in the holy place? No, in the Old Testament, before there were monks. Hmm. 
Who used to go in the holy place? No, the, the holy of holies is the high priest. The holy place. And prophets, no, not exactly. Huh. But the high priest can go in the holy place, but he can go in the holy of holies. Huh. Levites, the Levites which are like the deacons. So the people who could not enter, the, the, there was a, like a, a first veil. There was a first veil at the door of the holy place. Only the priest and Levites, deacons of the Old Testament called Levites, could go into the holy place. And then the, 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 this was, this was, there was one curtain all across which had this very fine linen with these designs of cherubim on it. And only the high priest could go uh, once a year. So even the priests and deacons could come. They could not. They look at this veil and they stop. The priest could not go in. The Levite could not go in. Even God gives a give warning to Moses in the book of Leviticus. Um, this is Leviticus 16, 2. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron. Who is Aaron? Who is Aaron? Huh? Aaron was a high priest. Tell Aaron, the high priest, your brother, not to come at just any time into the holy place inside the veil. I mean, God gave Moses special access. He had the VIP pass. But even Aaron, the high priest, who was supposed to go, hey, you cannot just go in. Tell Aaron, tell Aaron, your brother, not to come at just any time into the holy place inside the veil before the mercy seat, which is on the ark, lest he die. Lest he die. For I will appear in the cloud above the mercy seat. So, I gave you access, Moses, but not Aaron. He has to come only certain times in certain prescribed way. So you can see that veil was a big do not cross line. Something happened to the veil at a moment in history that forever changed that veil. Hmm. What happened to the veil that really changed its meaning? Something happened to the veil. Huh. It was split in half. The veil was, it was one piece. It was split in half. Who split it in half? Hmm. Who split the veil in half? Hmm. Obviously God, but how? Hmm. By the death of who? By Christ's death, thank you. By, at the moment Christ said it's finished and gave up the Spirit, at that moment, the, the veil was torn in two. And now people who had, could not even think of looking behind the veil, now everything was open. So what means that Christ brought that middle wall of separation, that divider line, that line of division, now it now was knocked down by the cross. It was invalidated by the cross. It was no longer a line of separation, but it was now become a way of access. See how this veil changed into a line of separation. That's how Abuna at the beginning of Vesper says, Elei Sony Mass, Othios, O Batir Bantukratur, Panagiatrias, Elei Sony Mass, O Holy Trinity, have mercy upon us, O Lord God of us, be with us. We have no other help in our tribulation than you. With the cross and seeking God's mercy, He dares to open the curtain or the veil. Because now we have permission, we have access through the cross, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. To open that veil. Before that, it was Aaron, Aaron with all his stature could not just go any time lest he die. So now we have access through the cross into the most holy place. That's why it's very important for the deacons when they go onto the altar, huh? The deacons should listen. The deacons should listen, huh? You're not listening. Yeah, yeah, you, you should be listening, yeah. When we go to the holy place, we should go with reverence. Whether I go from the center or from the side aisle, we'll go with reverence. 
Because God gave us the permission to go in. I just kind of, you, you know, you can walk into your, your room, your, somebody, your brother's room. You can barge in. You can go to any, any room in your house or your classroom. But this is a special place. I go with reverence. I bow down and take the blessings and go. Um, interestingly, St. Paul has, has, has a very interesting contemplation in the book of Hebrews about the meaning of the veil. He says in, uh, in Hebrews uh, 10, 19, beginning and 19, Therefore, brethren, having boldness, having boldness to enter the holies by the blood of Jesus. Remember, the high priest used to go with the blood of sacrifice. Now, no sacrifice. We have the sacrifice, Christ on the cross, through his blood, which we partake of, we have boldness to enter the holy place by a new living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. Through the veil that is his flesh. So now not only the, the, the curtain uh, uh, represents to me or presents to me an, uh, um, a means of access, but it reminds me that the veil is a symbol of Christ's flesh through which we have access. When he, when, 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 that, when that flesh, that body was, was, was on the cross, this became our gateway to the Father. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is what Christ said. You cannot go to the Father except through him. So in a sense, that curtain represents our gateway. That's why you always find... Uh, any, um, May people come and take the blessings and we symbolically take, take, take the, we kiss that veil. Um, another contemplation, interestingly, how the woman was healed when she touched the, the hem of his cloth. Anyway, whatever the contemplation, it's the same thing. It's pointing to the power we have through Christ himself. We have access to God and amazing things and amazing blessing through Christ himself. So that, that curtain represents to us it represents Christ in our midst. The veil is very important. And the veil, um, as you know, you can see it, ref it reflects the season. We, we have three veils. We have three colors. Huh, what are the three colors of the veil that we have in church? I'm sure you have seen them all. Everybody, I need somebody who didn't answer before. Somebody who didn't answer before. One of the fish had the Nobody here? What are the colors of the veil? Yeah. Huh? White, we have white, obviously, this is what we have, what we have now. Huh? What else? We have the red color. Huh? What? Blue? Black? Blue or black? Black. Black. So we have black, white, and red. Or black, white, and red. No, these are not the colors of any flag or anything, okay? <laughs> these, are the co they, they, these colors have symbolism. Most of the time we have the red. Why the red? Tell me why the red. Huh? Why the red? Yeah, it is the annual, yeah, but why the red? Why color? We, we could have picked purple or we could have picked yellow or green, whatever. Huh? It's the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. We have access through the Holy Spirit, through the blood of Christ. That's why it's red. That's why the baptizee with all the white clothes, we have the red sash. He got this white cloth through the blood of Christ as well. We have access through the blood of Christ. So the color, color red represents always the blood of Christ. Remember, see, whenever you see the red curtain, it is the blood of Christ that allows me to go into the holy place and serve there and receive the holy sacraments through the blood of Christ. Okay? The, the white. Why the white? Hmm. Why the white? Angels, huh? The light of Christ, the light of his resurrection. The concept of resurrection always tied with light, with the color white. As we see all day, all these flags around us in white with the flags on the, the, on the, the, the sash on the cross is white. Is the color of this, this light, this victory, this purity that we got through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And finally, we have the black one. The black represents uh, what? Sadness. Sadness for what? 
Are we sad for him? Are we sad for him? He said, daughters of Jerusalem, who are we sad for? Huh? For our sins. Thank you. For our sins. He said, do not weep for me, daughters of Jerusalem, but weep for a for yourself. It is that we are sad for our sin that caused Christ all the suffering. But, but this is what it means. So now we know the vestments of the, the, the veil. Next time we'll talk about the vestments we see inside the altar. Okay? But that's, we'll leave it for another time. So the veil was a do not cross line, a divider, a line of separation. But now it become our access and reminds us of Christ himself, the veil, the, his blood, the veil, through which we have access to the Holy of Holies and to have communion with God, to him be the glory now and forever unto the end of ages. Amen.